G'day YouTubers and welcome to what is in fact a country house gent narrowboat Christmas special. It's special for two reasons. Firstly, I won't be mentioning Christmas at all. Well, apart from then of course, and maybe once or twice, but we'll brush over that. And secondly, it's special because it's actually the middle of November, but we'll brush over that as well. In this festive episode, I wear a shirt, I talk to a duck, and I prepare my all-time favourite dish in the world. Health and safety is for Muppets. Oh, ah, oh, ay, ay, oh. Jeremy who? Jeremy Clarkson. Shut up. But first, ever since I bought Aslan, and ever since I've been uploading my experiences on YouTube, I've received many comments. I've also been asked many questions. So now, here is the first of several. No. Ahead then is the junction for the Middlewich and straight on for Chester and behind is the way to the Langothlin. So having been to Chester and then back down and then to the Langothlin and then back, I've stayed around the Nantwich area for a good couple of months now but today I shall be moving on because I'll be going up the Middlewich branch around about 10 mile stretch of canal that connects the Shropshire Union to the Trenton Mersey. And the Middlewich is supposed to be a very beautiful and underrated canal. And we shall find out. Straight away we have Midway boats bought a bottle of gas from there yesterday and there are some ominous black clouds hanging overhead. And would you believe it? Seeing as winter's here, I've got hold of myself a nice quilted warm and snuggly work shirt. Well that was the Langothlin, that's the way to Chester, and the middle which, as I say, is about 10 miles long goes along and joins up with the Trenton Mersey. There's four locks, two at the top, one around about the middle and one coming up shortly. Aslan's had a little spring clean, washed the roof and the sides and I've touched up all the various scratches in the green paintwork on the gunnels and parts of the blacking on the hull. And 
and some excellent news. Aslan now has a thermostat and this is her first run with it in so we'll soon see what happens. Hopefully I'll end up with lashings of hot water. Technically once again the full name of this canal is the Shropshire Union Canal Middlewich Branch. So once again I haven't actually been off the Shropshire Union since I joined it many months ago all the way down at Orderly Junction. So let's find out. I've had the range going for about two hours and I've already boiled a couple of kettles of water. She's about half full with smokeless. And I have here a Frey Bentos minced beef and onion pie. And the instructions say that for a traditional oven, gas or electric, you're looking at 25 to 30 minutes. The oven is very, very hot. As hot as an oven, basically. And in she blows. On the tray in the middle of the oven. It is currently 20 past five. So we'll say 30 minutes, so 10 to six, we'll come back and take a look. I can hear it. Sizzling. Half an hour, eh? Oh my. Well, look at that. I would say that is done. Half an hour. And the simple and honest answer is that I was right in the middle of nowhere, even though I was near a town, but one of the cylinders was still working on the engine. And at the time when I took the old one off, I didn't know at all if I was going to be able to get it repaired or not. So bearing in mind that the boat is my home and my entire world, if I'd taken off both injector pumps, and couldn't get either of them repaired, I'd have ended up with an engine with no working cylinders and I'd have been stranded. Mm. Oh, steady on.
These are quite deep locks here. And they empty very quickly. Here's another new marina that's not on my map. You see a lot of these marinas next to farms. I think, I might not be correct, but that's to do with grants to develop farmland. And I would hazard a guess, Aqueduct Marina as well. I think if I own some land next to a canal, I'd do something very similar. Right, so I've stopped for half an hour to make a quick cup of tea and to prepare the basic ingredients for the meal I'm going to be making tonight, which is my all-time favourite dish in the world, a lamb madras with an extra kick. First things first, I'm going to begin by making a marinade for the lamb. And this is the lamb. Got this from a local butcher. I believe it's shoulder. Some nice, uh, nice good pieces of lamb there. Some garlic. Five cloves there. Pataks madras spice paste. I used to experiment mixing my own spices but it's a whole lot easier just to use that all good ingredient and then the extra kick bit are dried chili seeds these are very very hot then of course you'll need a container to marinade the lamb in and this funny enough is an old takeaway lamb vindaloo container Firstly then, I'm going to begin chopping the garlic. Then I'm just going to slice that into thin slices. If you're going to follow this recipe, then I'd make sure first that you enjoy a really hot curry because it is exceptionally hot but also very tasty. Then we take our madras paste and the container and I'm going to put in two good sized dollops. And a little bit. Two and a half, there we go. You can always add a bit more during the cooking. And then to that I'm going to add a little drop of cold water we don't want warm water otherwise the meat will start to cook which is a health and safety no-no give that a good stir squash it flatten it and generally break it all up that's all nicely spread into the liquid then I'm going to throw in the garlic. Then I'm going to add the chilies. Now I'm going to put in the equivalent of probably two teaspoons because I say they are quite vicious. And that will be enough. And then we'll put that to one side. And 
then we chop the lamb, which I'm going to chop into sort of pieces about that size. Couldn't have done this with my old knife, which was a health and safety nightmare. Though I tend not to get too obsessed with health and safety. I think a lot of it is common sense. As a lot of people say, health and safety is for Muppets. Oh, ah, oh, ay, ay, oh. Edit that bit out. As a lot of people say, health and safety is a very good idea. Then we simply take our marinade and put the lamb in it. Let me make sure that it's all in there like so and add just a little drop more water. I'll be using the marinade itself in the cooking once I've initially seared the meat. Now we put the lid on. And then we put that in the coldest part of the fridge. Not in the freezer, because we don't want to freeze it. And we'll come back to it later. So with that done, I'm going to get going again. It's now about half past twelve. So by the time I get around to cooking it, it'll be about seven o'clock. So it will have around about six and a half to seven hours marinating. Yes, the middle witch is very pretty. That down there is Church Minchel. No shops, but there is a pub. And of course, the 18th century church where it gets its name from. I love this shirt. It's warm and snuggly. It keeps the breeze out. stables. So I wonder if this was something to do with horse-drawn boats and a place to swap your horses. 
rest for the night. But now a very, very beautiful and characterful house. I think this place might do me for tonight. Hmm. We're in for some atrocious rain and winds tonight, and it's bitterly cold outside. So is it cold on a boat in winter? Hmm. Is it cold in your house when you don't put the central heating on? The fire's going and it's taken me three rather small shovels of smokeless fuel. In fact I've had to close the damper because it was just getting too hot and I'm just wearing a t-shirt. So no, it's not cold on a boat in the winter. Now we come to the next part which is cooking the curry. For this I'm going to be using an onion, four fresh tomatoes. Now I used to use tin tomatoes but I found that they were quite acidic and they had a negative effect on the taste of the curry. I like mushrooms in my curry, a potato and the rice. This is Sainsbury's basmati rice it's a microwave rice and the ingredients are just cooked basmati rice, sunflower oil and salt. Now usually you would do this in a microwave but I'm going to demonstrate without using a microwave. Firstly then, I'm going to get the pan hot and I'm going to put in a little olive oil Chop up the onion. And we'll put that in the pan. And while that's frying, I'll slice up some mushrooms thin and we'll let those fry and brown nicely. So I've cut the tomatoes in half and then cut them again into thirds. So they're browning nicely, so I'm now going to throw in the mushrooms. So the mushrooms have had a couple of minutes, so I'm then going to put the whole lot into a bowl. take our lamb which has been marinating for the last six and a half to seven hours and we then pick out each individual bit of lamb. The aromas coming off of this are amazing. As a matter of fact, it smells exactly as it does when you walk through the door of an Indian takeaway or restaurant. As I said earlier, I'm going to be using that marinade in the cooking, which is fine, even though it's had raw meat in it, provided it's cooked properly, which it will be. And we're now going to fry that up 
only lightly, you only want to seal it. Of course you can make this without the extra chilies, but I like a vindaloo. So by adding the chilies, I'm vindalurizing it, if that's such a word. And that's sealed up quite nicely. So I'm now going to throw the onions and mushrooms back in. You have to take my word for it, it smells delicious. Then I'm just going to make a little space in the middle. And I'll put the tomatoes in there. And they'll do a combination of two things. They will fry and steam. And we'll just mix it all together. And give that about another minute. So we're now going to add the marinade, which contains all the wonderful active ingredients. And we'll pull that all over like that. And we'll add some water out of the kettle. And we'll bring that to the boil. We'll take the potato. And I'm going to cut it into quarters. Like so. You can of course peel the potato if you want, but I like potatoes with the skin on, even chips. And I'm going to place those in such a way that they sit on the bottom of the pan. We don't want any onions or mushrooms or whatever in between. Now, the purpose of the potato, one, they taste great. Two, as they cook they release starch which actually thickens the sauce three it absorbs the sauce and four they are your curry cooking guideline when the potatoes are done so's the curry and that's coming to the boil so I'm just going to turn it down a bit now and we'll leave that to simmer Mm. Coming along nicely. And I'll stir that in. Then I'm going to turn the potatoes over onto their other sides like that. Making sure they're sat on the bottom. And we'll leave that to simmer away again. The potatoes aren't far off. So I like a bit of greenery in my curry, so I have here some strong and peppery wild rocket. You can add quite a bit of this because it just it reduces down to nothing. So I'm going to basically cover the whole top of the curry with rocket. So the curry is about 10 minutes away, which means it's time to do the rice. As I say, this rice is meant to be done in a microwave, but does perfectly well in a pan of boiling water and takes only two minutes. In she blows. Pour in the water. When that comes to the boil, I'll let it boil for a further two minutes and then it'll be ready. And at the same time, in go the chapatis for a couple of minutes. We'll just drain the rice. Perfectly cooked rice in two minutes without a microwave.
And then, as the final garnish, a bit of Greek style natural yogurt. Oh wow, mm. the marinating makes a huge difference to the flavour of the meat. And a nice bit of chapati. Mm. Absolutely first rate, if I say so myself. Mm. And of course, washed down, not with a pint of red wine, but a pint of cranberry juice. Ooh. Paradise. This was a very enjoyable stop. A little bit exposed. So last night, Aslan and I were buffeted about quite a bit but never got scary or anything like that so let's make the final push onto Middlewich eh no map for the time being because quite simply it would blow away Some beautiful colours this time of year. Ah, the first whiffs of civilization. The wind's extremely strong and it's giving the canal the feel of a river. There is a bitterly cold wind, but fortunately, thanks to my wonderful shirt, I'm feeling quite snug at the moment. And I think maybe a pair of gloves might be on the cards. Perhaps some fingerless ones like from the old Orvis advert, because it were a long walk up that hill to bakery. You do get a better class of combustion when you're able to get the engine hot. It's supposed to be gusts of up to 60 miles an hour today, and I can well believe it. Aha, uh -huh. and there's Middlewich.
this will do me very nicely. Well that's a very good question, and one where the answer surprised even me, as we'll now find out. Here then is the cost of travelling from Crick to Swanley Marina by narrowboat. You'll notice I've put Swanley Marina and not Langothlin, because Swanley was where I put in my second lot of diesel. First up, gas, which is the 13 kilo gas bottles in the front locker or LPG, liquid petroleum gas. I bought two 13 kilo bottles of Cali gas, uh, both of them from Yelvertoft, on the day of my maiden launch. And they were £27 each. Two of those came to £54. Then we have the spare parts, which were mainly engine spares. Oh dear. The fabulous diesel injector pump, which left me stranded at Atherston for eight days. And the cost to have that reconditioned was £95, including VAT, boo, and delivery. Then we have the water pump impellers. I ended up buying two, even though I only needed one. And two of those set me back £49, including VAT, boo, and delivery. Then the thermostat, which wasn't that expensive, 495 including VAT and delivery. And we've got engine gearbox oil. I've had to top up the engine with about a quarter of a litre over the course of the journey, which for a 65 year old engine isn't bad at all. But you can only buy it in 5 litres, Morris Golden Film, SAE 30, and that's 27.95 including VAT and delivery. So the total spares cost was £95 for the injector pump, £49 for the impellers, £4.95 for the thermostat and £27.95 for the oil which comes to £176.90. Then other costs of travelling from Crick to Swanley Marina by narrowboat. Licence and insurance. The Canal and River Trust licence now for a 45 foot boat, which Aslan is, it's £748 for 12 months. But I've divided it by three, because my journey was over four months, which was £250 or thereabouts. And insurance, fully comprehensive with content, 12 month policy is £175. But divided by three, for a four month journey, it's £58. And these are the costs of not included. Not included food because whether you went by plane, car, jet ski, roller skates, whatever, you'd still have to eat. Clothing, for the same reasons. Laundry, mobile phone data, not really relevant to the cost of travelling on a boat. And beer. Then we come to the final big expense, diesel. And for this, I've split it up into two refuels. It was Crick to Foxton to Great Hayward Junction. That was my maiden voyage, then all the way down and across and up to Great Hayward Junction. And at Great Hayward Junction, I put in 12 Imperial gallons or 55 litres, or thereabouts, near enough. It was a distance of only 107 miles, which really surprised me. I thought I'd done about 300, but... That shows how canals can alter your perception of time and distance. Which works out at an incredible 9 miles per gallon. More on that a bit later. Now the cost of that fuel is 55 litres at 70 pence a litre. Came to £38.40 or £3.20 per gallon. Which gives a cost per mile of 36 pence a mile. Then we have the cost of the diesel from Great Hayward Junction 
to Chester and then to Swanley Marina near the start of the Langothlin. Once again it was around about 12 imperial gallons, 54 litres this time. 104 miles, now that wasn't planned, that's just sheer coincidence that the distance between the two fills are within 3 miles of each other which works out at 8.6 miles per gallon. Now that's after I'd fitted the new injector pump but the second leg of the journey involved a lot more locks which is one of the reasons why you have such a low miles per gallon on a narrow boat and as I say more on that a bit later. And that fuel 54 litres cost 78 pence a litre 42 pounds 12 or 3 pounds 90 per gallon which gave a cost per mile of 45 pence a mile. So the total cost in diesel from Crick to Swanley Marina just at the start of the Langothlin was £38.40 and £42.12 which came to £80.52p. Now I thought as a comparison I'd work out the same journey if I'd done it in a car. Now for this I've used as an example the last car I owned which was a Land Rover Discovery TD5 diesel it works out a total journey of 211 miles. Now the Discovery on a good day would average about 25 miles per gallon. So it works out it would use 8.5 gallons of diesel. Costing approximately £6 per gallon at the pump. Which would give a total fuel cost of £51. Or a cost per mile of 24 pence. You compare that to the two refuels on the boat 36p and 45p per mile so the cost between going by boat and car in diesel is £80.52 for the boat minus £51 for the car comes to £29.52 so the car is cheaper on that same journey by about £30 so adding all that up the £54 for the gas £176.90 for the engine spares £250 for four months license, £58 for four months insurance and a total diesel cost of £80.52 that comes to a total cost of the journey from Crick to Chester and then to Swanley Marina of £619.42 the biggest surprise for me, well there are actually two was that I hadn't travelled as far as I thought I had. I thought I'd travelled hundreds and hundreds of miles and the second surprise was the miles per gallon I was getting from my boat. For sure the initial thought would be as I thought that it's because I have a 65 year old engine. That was until I went onto the internet researching just how much miles per gallon other people get from their boats and the answer was even more surprising it would appear the average is around about 7 miles per gallon and the reason is very straightforward the diesel engine in a narrow boat spends the vast majority of its time idling whether it's sat waiting at a lock or even just cruising along the canal the revs are very low and continual low revs in a diesel engine equals very high fuel consumption it's even more surprising when you take into account that these seven mile per gallon figures are being achieved by boats with brand spanking new state-of-the-art engines. All of which brings us to a startling conclusion. If you want to travel from Crick to Chester and then to Swanley Marina, take the car. It's a lot cheaper and it's a lot more efficient. If however you must go by boat do it in one with a 65 year old engine. And on that bombshell, it is time to end. Thank you so much for watching, and I'd just like to wish you all a very relaxing and value for money Christmas, and I'll see you in the new year with more canal adventures. Cheers for now. Well done, girl, absolutely fantastic. So it's a Radin at Northwich Memorial Court starting on the 9th of December, starring Rue. Hey, we're talking of money. I hope we should tell the boys and girls how poor we are, Mum. Oh, yes, we are poor. <laughs> I think the actor got quite fancy. <laughs>
because I'm sure you all think I'm pretty, don't you? No. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. Which are red. Violets are blue. Your eyes are the colour. Sir, will you place a kiss upon these lips? Oh, yes, it is. Does Aslan have a steam engine? Get a haircut. How much wine do you drink? You should give away your camcorder and forget you ever tried to make a video. Better still, give it to a blind man with no arms and he'll make better videos than you. <laughs> 